Yeah, tell us why you came to Exeter. <laughs> yeah, so I've lived in Devon for about 10 years um, after, you know, like an awful lot of people in creative industry, spending a good many years in London, which were fabulous, but it's always nice to have a change. Yeah. And um, But I spent most of that time working outside the region with creative industry businesses around the UK, you know, in London, but also in Liverpool and Manchester. Um, and, that, and the year before the pandemic, I was running a software business in Edinburgh as a sort of interim CEO. So when the pandemic hit that, and this job came up, um, I thought that is a real opportunity to work with creative industry businesses in the region. Mm. And, um, and that has already been fantastic in the first year that I've been here. You come with so much industry knowledge. Um, what does the what, what's the university part of the job? What is your role? <laughs> so the new bit is working with academics, but I think that that's kind of quite good that I'm a newbie because I think in that way I'm like a lot of our creative industry partners. Yeah. You know, so I'm I'm in their shoes thinking, how do I work with an academic? What what what? What's that relationship mean? You know, what do they do and what do we do and how do we form that sort of partnership? So I am just really starting to understand that. And also it's really important for me to learn what research academics are doing at the University of Exeter, you know. Mm. And um, so I find out more about that, you know, every day. So there's, there's just so much goes on. It's such a complicated organisation. So everyone, you know, who, who deals with the, with the university knows it's incredibly complex. And can you tell us about this current research project and what, what you want from it? So we want to um, do this survey to find out a lot more about creative industry businesses in Exeter and also, uh, very importantly, in wider Devon. So wherever you are in Devon, please fill it in and let us know all about you. Um, we, uh, we want to learn really about the characteristics of local creative industry businesses so that we can understand how to, um, how to give, have more capacity, you know, to, to support them and, and, and to, um, you know, work with businesses so that we're doing what they need, you know, <laughs> not, 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 not just what we need or not even what, what we need. I think that the evidence as well that we gather is really important in terms of making the case for bidding for regional funding for creative industry businesses. Mm. And that means funding down the line for these businesses, the opportunity of funding. Yeah, absolutely. So when I say that, there's a lot of um, big regionally based creative industry funding flow comes to universities but flows out of the universities, so should flow out of universities to creative industry businesses. That's really what that money is for. Mm. So it's to um, create um, interventions and to support businesses to innovate, yeah. to increase R&D and to create new products and services. The success of that funding is measured on new products and services. Mm. It's, not, it's not measured on published papers or whatever. Brilliant. You know, that kind of funding is all about new stuff, making stuff, making new stuff, doing the stuff that creative industries like doing. Yes. yes. <laughs> people in the creative, in you know, yeah. creative people like doing is to support that. And sometimes don't have the capacity to, so this helps build that capacity. And, yeah, and or just have something time. missing or, yeah. or whatever. And, and But also critically don't have the capacity to, to go after significant funding. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's one of the hardest things of all, isn't it? Mm. When you're trying to keep a business together. Yes, time. Time, <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely, time. What are you most excited about in terms for the sector, creative, creative what, do you, what would you call it, creative technology sector? Yeah, and creative industry businesses. Mm. I um, personally am really, really excited about the use of satellite data linked with, uh, used by sort of creative, creative businesses. Um, a lot of satellite data now is about environment um, and I think there's an opportunity for creative industry businesses to use that data to create interactions in real time for audiences so that for instance you know um, if we can actually see if if people in the street um, put their lights on you know or turn them off and you can there's a lot I think there's a lot of potential 
to 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 create that sort of really um, exciting uh, interaction. Um, immersive, of course, you know. Um, I think immersive is very important for the southwest. We've got increasing number of um, immersive uh, facilities, um, both at the University of Exeter, but also our colleagues at Plymouth mm -hmm. uh, and at Falmouth. I think I would urge creative industry businesses to really make use of those. Um, they're there, you know. C come and come and come and play in them, yeah. you know. Um, but that, I, that yeah. invitation to come and play is, <laughs> is wonderful. Like how? Uh, so how can people get involved with you and with the university? Well, I, you know, my my door is re is really open. I, I want to hear from all, all kinds of, of creative industry businesses. Uh, you know, send me an email, come, come and speak to me. Um, let's get together. Let's have a coffee, maybe. In real life. <laughs> the excitement. <laughs> um, and, um, yeah, so I think there's opportunities, particularly for us to work with businesses to put, support their sort of innovation aspects of, of their funding uh, funding bids. So, for instance, Innovate uh, UKRI smart grants, which were kind of rolling fund, uh, a fund a bit, you know, applications that need to be led by businesses. Um, but they're incredibly onerous and difficult um, to do. You know, there's a lot of work in them, and um, you know, we can really help to put sort of innovation. In, into those applications and, and to help to sort of shape those 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 kinds of bids. It's, it's really noticeable that um, the South West um, does not um, put in as many applications really? yeah. as, as other regions and um, so that's a missed opportunity. Yeah, and yet we do have a lot of creative businesses here, don't we? What, no, of course, yeah, what, absolutely. What characterises them? To, uh, the moment do you think I mean I know you're doing the research to find out but yeah I think it's I wouldn't generalize in terms of the sectors or or actually the the nature of those businesses um, we are really working on research that builds on Nesta's policy and evidence center for the creative industries and um, that has sort of that has found about 22 sort of micro clusters in Devon and Cornwall and, I, and that's very interesting because the characteristics of how businesses do or don't cluster together, creative industry businesses do and don't cluster together in rural and semi-rural mm. uh, regions it is, is different you know, than in, in very intensive urban, urban clusters and there's a lot of interest at the moment, we're going to do some work about how that location or co co-location of businesses um, is beneficial to, to, you know, to their growth or whether in fact the pandemic has um, changed that dynamic and that if, in fact there's more of a level playing field if in fact, you know, you're, you're working out of your beach hut in the beach that miraculously no one else has found <laughs> <laughs> on the peninsula. So um, I think... So I think this, this, I think, so for instance, I think nationally they would characterise creative industry businesses in Devon and Cornwall as rural and semi-rural right. kind of micro, micro clusters. Yeah. Yeah. So I wonder if you just say a little bit more about possible opportunity from the pandemic. In, in... So, so really interesting report came from um, Policy and Evidence Centre just this month. So, sorry. Uh, so a really uh, the Policy and Evidence Centre of Creative Industries published a really interesting report uh, in the summer and um, which suggests that micro clusters that are, that are outside the major urban clusters have fared better mm -hmm. during the pandemic than um, kind of urban clusters mm -hmm. and urban micro clusters and are more likely to have increased employees uh, are more likely to have found customers outside of their region and are more likely to invest invested in R&D. Right. So that's incredibly interesting. So we want to do some research about whether, in fact, that's the case in our region. Mm -hmm. We can find evidence for that. 
and also if we do why that might be so you can postulate why it might be because there's more equal access to customers because we're all online now right and also similarly to a skilled workforce you don't have to recruit um you know within 40 miles of Rothfish you you can nab that brilliant creative yeah. you know from anywhere in the world could be anywhere yeah, yeah absolutely and whether that's really making a difference mm -hmm. and I think why that's interesting is what it tells policymakers in the region mm -hmm. about what they could be doing in terms of interventions yeah. um, for create to you know to stoke the growth of those kind of creative industry businesses so that's another reason for creative businesses to get involved, isn't it? Because it influences policy makers. Absolutely. Yeah, because what the information that we're gathering is going to be presented to policy makers in the region. You know, for instance, there's been a long term um, planning around creating sort of innovation districts. Right. Um, but is that a strategy that's really going to deliver value for many mm. in the future? you know, in a post-pandemic future, or would we actually be better just really um, investing in um, rapid 5G, 5G rollout? Yeah. It's an interesting question, isn't it? Mm. We don't, don't think we really know the answer, but it'd be really good to find out. Yes, and creative businesses can help you do that. Uh, yeah, mm. and so we, we, you know, we, need, ev we mm. need to look for evidence and we need to work with creative businesses to sort of give, give us evidence and, and talk to us, uh, uh, you know, about, about the realities of their, of their business, you know. Is there any, anything specific, any specific criteria for a creative business to get involved? Or? I would, I think it's dangerous to sort of, everyone tries to sort of, you know, put a circle around what's a creative, in, what's a creative <laughs> industry, isn't it? And what isn't, you know if you are. Right. I, that's what I'm saying. I think it's self-defining okay. myself. Well, thank you ever so much um, for today. Great to meet you in person, in real life. <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Thank you, Katie.